Anyone who listens to WEEI's Kirk and Callahan know they have a vendetta against the Boston Globe. Even they admit it. This week, Globe columnist Kevin Cullen is in their crosshairs for columns he wrote about the Boston Marathon bombings, where Kirk and Callahan say Cullen leaves the impression he was there when it happened. In his column last Sunday, the Boston Globe's Kevin Cullen wrote, even a house fire reminds him of the smell of Boylston Street five years ago, saying, I can taste it when I'm around a campfire. I can see it when I bump into survivors. And in a column from a day after the bombings, Cullen wrote, I saw an older runner wearing high-rise pink socks about to cross the finish line. He was knocked to the ground. WEEI's Kirk Minahan accuses Cullen of trying to make it sound like he was there. He wasn't there. He admits he wasn't there. He watched on TV. Why well, I mean, write that? Uh, because it wouldn't Do you get work. The, Did you get that sense? No. Cullen has been open about his whereabouts that day, telling C-SPAN five years ago he was not at the finish line. When the bombing happened, I was about a mile away from the finish line. Still, Minahan and Jerry Callahan had been on a crusade this week, calling Cullen a fraud and a liar, airing this clip from an HBO documentary where Cullen appears to be saying he was right there when it happened. I remember at one point hearing... Um, Crystal Campbell's death wheel. This is insane. But this I remember hearing oh. that, and it felt like something passed through me. But here's what's even more insane. WEEI edited out the part where Cullen says he heard the wail on tape. This evidence, so much of this stuff is actually on videotape. Nothing captured the horror of what happened that day than to listen to the sound. I remember at one point hearing um, Crystal Campbell's death wheel. As for the Boston Globe's response, editor Brian McGrory told Beat the Press last night, We are conducting a review, and if the record needs to be corrected in any way, we will do so forthrightly. And late this afternoon, we got notification that uh, Kevin Cullen will be placed on administrative leave pending the outcome of this review. We don't know whether the review includes all of Colin, uh, Cullen's columns or just the ones relating to the marathon. When it was Mike Barnacle back in 1998, I believe they reviewed all of them. I don't know if that's going to be the case. Um, just to the central issue here, because there was a lot of other layers in this that I have to say that Kirk and Callahan got into that I couldn't put into the piece. But on the issue of the columns itself, certainly I think a reasonable person reading those columns could make the assumption or get the impression that Kevin Cullen was there. I thought that part of it was easily fixable. They could have put an editor's note even even in paper earlier later in the week. I'm not sure why they didn't do that, other than the fact that I don't think they wanted to respond directly to uh, to, to Kirk and and, and and partly it was because um, the tone of their uh, criticism was so ugly and vituperative and just you know gleeful, really in a sense that they were trying to bring somebody down. But I I, I think they, uh, to give them credit, I think they raised a legitimate issue. I think they raised a legitimate issue, too. Um, you know, I read that column last Sunday. I was very impressed with it. Uh, I don't remember all the details of what Kevin Cullen has said over the years, so I took it to mean that he was there at the finish line. Uh, now, you go back and read it knowing that he wasn't at the finish line, and it seems ambiguous. However, what bothers me about it is that it seems deliberately ambiguous, as if he were, it was okay with him if you got the impression that he was at the finish line. Um, now, we'll see what the review brings about. I will tell you, I've admired Kevin Cullen's work for years. Uh, unlike some other people we could uh, name, uh, you already named one of them, uh, there's never been any question about his work before. So I hope that any review shows that this was a one-time lapse. It would really be a shame if it was anything more than that. I have uh, two points um, from, you know, what, after reading the, the column. First of all, I feel at least part of it felt a little overwritten. Um, there, there was a lot in there that felt that he was working really hard to, to build this, this feeling and this sense, and the story is tragic on its own. And so I felt it was, it was a little overwritten. But my first impression was that, um, you know, whether, and, and this is not completely to defend him because he said other things beyond the column, but if, even if you weren't there on that day, there are a lot of the feelings that he expressed that you could sense and you could feel. I was on my way from D.C. to New Jersey at the time. And after I returned to Boston, if you're from this area, 
you just had to walk around and talk to people and you got a sense of what it was like maybe not to be right there at the mm -hmm. moment but there was something in the air now you know smelling things and so forth i think that's taken it a little too far this this would have been an easy fix to yeah. say you know we all felt as if we were there and then after that you can say anything you want and i think that's where you know if, if in fact we feel that a mistake has been made that's where it, had it happened yeah i mean i, th I think that it, that what the Globe is doing in reviewing is totally appropriate, and we'll see what, what comes out of it. I think we've got a sort of intersection of two different impulses. One is that uh, Metro columnists at newspapers are expected to provide a sort of emotional heft to the big events of a city, and uh, columnists in the past have gotten in trouble for that, right? Uh, and it's, it, it did feel, I agree with Dan's reading, that it certainly felt like the impression was meant to be that he was there even though on past occasions he has said he only got there a couple of hours later. The smell and the taste, you know, I think was, was pushing that a bit far. But you also have the issue of this being an incredibly mediated experience, right? I wasn't in town. I was, it was the day after my wedding party in Louisiana. Uh, but nonetheless, the, the hours and hours of video that we all saw, the, the, from the live events in, during the manhunt and the enormous numbers of amounts of evidence that were put out in the trial, there's a real sense in which we all saw yes. a lot of it, even if we weren't there. And I can imagine a scenario where we would say, you know, I, I remember seeing Barack Obama give a talk at the DNC, at, at his acceptance speech. Mm -hmm. or I remember seeing Donald Trump do this. And you didn't, you weren't there. But yeah, you okay. saw it. it so, made it like when he said he saw the runner get knocked down. Right. It, it must have been on TV or some sort of a clip he saw somewhere. Right. But, but that's that's the opening that yeah. sort of allowed him yeah. to go in and do what seems right. to be a step too yeah. far. Mm. So I was really moved by the column, and I was just swept into it. And until you know it came up, well, was he there or not? I really had not paused to think about that. I. I completely entered into the experience as he outlined it because I thought it was so beautifully done. So beautifully done, I read the comments because I wanted to see if other people agreed with me and they, many of them did. So there is that. I also know, having had to write five uh, Boston Marathon bombing commentaries for myself <laughs> to air on WGBH, how tough it is um, and, I, and to create a feeling about it that you want to express with two other people from the community. So I get that mm -hmm. as well. But it can't be, as many of you have said, that there was any deliberate misleading. Then, well, then we have a problem. Yeah, because yeah. there is a second layer to this, which I did not get into, which Kirk and Callahan brought up repeatedly, and that was his interaction with first responders on that day. And he quotes a guy, a firefighter named Sean O'Brien, saying that he rescued uh, Janie uh, Richard and that noticed later that her leg was missing and crawled back on his knees to get the... And n they talked to the, the firefighter himself and said, that did not happen. I really don't know uh, Kevin Cullen. And then they credited the actual person who did pick up Janie and rush her to the ambulance and already knew she was... So there was a lot of... There was some detail. There was some other detail that was wrong kind of in the frantic moment of the retelling that uh, Bill Richard had run the marathon, that young Martin Richard jumped the marathon line and went out and hugged his father, which could never happen. It couldn't right. have happened four years ago or five years ago, much less today because of the way you know, the barricades right. were put up. So, but some of that was just inaccuracies in, in the heat of the moment. And some of it, uh, uh, others, uh, I don't know, by the way, if the Globe is looking into mm. those stories as well mm. or they're just concerned with what was in the newspaper. Well, I hope it's a thorough review. I'm willing to wait for the results of the review, but I hope it's thorough and fairly sweeping. Uh, the, the one thing that I keep coming back to is I find it almost impossible to believe that Cullen was deliberately trying to mislead anyone given that he had spoken so publicly right. about having been a mile away when the bombing happened. I mean, he knows that tape is out there. He knows he sure. said it. So I, I really can't imagine he was mm. deliberately trying to make anybody think and he was I at the And I want to reemphasize something that, because Kirk and Callahan were playing that clip all day from the HBO documentary where he said he heard Crystal Campbell's death wail he heard it on tape. Yeah, and he, he said that. And every day at context. trial, right. you could go to the evidence room. I didn't because I thought it was too gruesome. And he went because he was covering the trial for the Globe. And you could go up there and listen to, to audio tapes, listen to videotapes. You could read whole tra transcripts of stuff. So the evidence was all there for, for anybody who wanted to, to 
I do want to say, when you cover a big story, and I've had this happen to me, you know, you cover something 10 years ago, and you were there, and you remember everything that you covered, and since that time, in between all of that, you've read a lot of other accounts, you've seen documentaries on it, and sometimes it does get a it little fuzzy, it and it's like, oh, is this what I saw, or is this what I've picked up along the way? Yeah. And if you can find other things, then it becomes more deliberate, mm -hmm. but you, you can make a mistake yeah. thinking it was yours. But it's one thing to do that in an offhand comment or a, a right. conversation. Right. To, Your to, column is yeah. something that you, you should, should research be, you have, it to make sure. Well, search yes. the and archives. And, and, and I want right. to say that the firefighter thing is really is kind of is worrisome. Yeah, that's troublesome. It is. Yes.